All I can say is a win is a win. Man United get the win against Brentford. Oh my gosh, we have been waiting for this win. It feels like we've been waiting for months for this win. We've been drawing game after game. There's been so much speculation about our manager, player revolt, but finally we got a good game. Finally, we get a win. Man United 2, Brentford 1. Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Man United finally get a win in the Premier League. If you're here for the first time, comment down below what you thought of that performance. I thought it was a great performance in the second half. I think the first half, Brentford did what Brentford usually does. The only thing anyone could speak about was how quickly Brentford get the first goal. And you can kind of see what the idea was from Eric Ten Hag. He just kept it really tight. They had that early, early chance, but we kept it really tight. Um, I think the defense did well. Um, the first half, like I said, was a bit sad. We conceded the first goal. We got the equalizer. Let me just say that Garnacho is possibly our best player. He is an absolute generational talent. I mean, that was that whole performance from him was just sensational every time he gets the ball and i actually wanted to mention something i don't know if anyone noticed i'm sure everyone noticed but garnacho started on the left and rashford started on the right do you know why that is rashford doesn't enjoy tracking back and that side is brian and burmo i don't remember brian and burmo being involved very much um in that first half and i think that was a testament to that tactical switch from eric ten hog is that he knows and i was speaking about this if you're going to play marcus rashford that's fine but what you have to do is is you have to create cover because you know he's not going to defend you know he's not going to track back you know he's not going to be involved defensively and i think eric ten hog needs to actually take the credit for that because he did make there were two tactical decisions that he made in this game the first half was garnacho on the left rashford on the right which completely nullified Brentford's best player. He did that perfectly. And the second half was that tweak with Diogo Dallo. I think that was absolutely significant. It almost felt like we were playing with wingbacks and we just had a constant overload. It kind of felt like wingbacks. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was. I don't know. We'll have to look at the technical analysis back again. But I think just on Garnacho, Garnacho is seriously a generational talent, and I think he is of the level. He is extremely, extremely good at what he does. He's always creating something. He's always making something happen. And I think this absolutely good um, display from him today just really made us realize more and more what a good player he, he is and how whenever he's fit, he has to be playing. I think he adds something so, so significant. He obviously got a beautiful goal, great assist from Rashford. Rashford can cross. Other than that in the game, I thought Rashford was quite average as um, he's been for quite a while now. But that assist to Garnacho was absolutely beautiful. Obviously, Hoyland gets his goal as well, which is absolutely great for him. I am anti-striker when it comes to Man United. You might know that. I don't think we need a striker when we play, but I'm glad today Hoyland got two chances. One of the chances was a goal. Um, and he actually did really well. He took the goal really well, and I was glad about that. He got us the winning goal. And I think again on the on the manager. Before I get into some negative stuff on the manager, Ten Hag lives to fight another day because it feels like we are like that. Two hours before the game, um, I saw a tweet about the three man managerial list. If Ten Hag is to be sacked, but does does that mean if he lost today, he was going to be sacked on Monday? It sometimes is confusing, but I'm like I said, whenever Ten Hag wins, it feels like we breathe as Man United fans because he lives to fight another day. We love to see another day because a win is a win. That is a much needed three points. It should take us to the into the top half of the table because uh, I think eighth place was like still sitting on ten. So, but let's see what the table looks like at the end of today. But I think what we I'm extremely glad for the manager. I'm extremely glad for the players. Um, another positive that I want to speak about is Casemiro in the second half. I, I think the whole team in the second half did a lot better. I don't know what happened to Brentford, though. It felt like they got slower and we got quicker, which makes no sense because we've got Christian Eriksen and Casemiro in the midfield, no legs. But it felt like Brentford got slow and we got quicker. I think Casemiro was reading the game really well in the second half. We, we got so many turnovers. Uh, which led to quick counter-attacks. 
Uh, so I think Casemiro did very, very well. I was, I was glad for him. Um, my ideal team is still him and Ugarte in the same team. <laughs> I know it'll never happen, but that's still my ideal team just to really shut down the defense. But I think a win is a win. And I'm actually so, so glad um, about the win. I think it was absolutely, it was absolutely great. It was a very, very good win. I think the only, I wouldn't even call it a negative, but I think the thing that we still are waiting to see um, is that real high line position based football. The commentator mentioned something about the passing, uh, but mostly that passing is between our defense and sometimes into our midfield, but mostly our defense. So are you really playing out from the back? If you play out from the back from your goalkeeper to the defenders and then someone hits a long ball, that's not playing out from the back. So I think my, my, that's my first negative is that we still aren't necessarily seeing that extremely high line, that beautiful high line that Eric Ten Hag always speaks about. Um, maybe we will see it, maybe we won't. I, I, I don't know, but I felt like today we did play quite low and it's understandable because Brentford do like to score a lot of goals. They do have a threat going forward. So I, I can imagine that Ten Hag wanted to set up with us being very compact, uh, which worked. It worked. It obviously, we didn't get a clean sheet, but it did work. We held, we held on to the win um, in the end. Uh, the second thing, um, Bruno Fernandes, I really think Bruno Fernandes needs a rest. Um, he does seem like he is tired. I think he needs to be rested. I hope that he gets rest. Yeah, he obviously can't play uh, because he got another red card in the Europa League. So at least he will get a rest. And I think he does need a rest. I think he needs some time off. Uh, to just really regenerate his energy. He does seem like he doesn't have much energy. Uh, the passes are sometimes completely wayward. He had glimpses today. I'm not saying write him off completely, but I don't know. I think we could have we we could have done with someone like Mason Mount, who obviously, unfortunately, wasn't ready. But when he is ready, I'd like to see him being given a go um, in that role. Marcus Rashford, obviously, Marcus Rashford got the assist. Um, but these two players I'm mentioning are two of the highest earning players at our club. And Marcus Rashford was, again, I felt a ghost. Uh, the spirit of Scott McTominay for Man United went onto Marcus Rashford because now he's Casper the friendly ghost. Um, I think other than that assist, what else did you really offer? And I think that's the story of Marcus Rashford. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know Rashford is always a controversial topic, but I really don't see what he is adding. I give credit to Ten Hag on the fact that he switched he switched wings, but that's because Marcus Rashford doesn't track back. That's why he did it. Marcus Rashford didn't say to him, hey, can I play on the right? He knew Brian and Bermo is a big problem, and he nullified that problem by putting Garnacho there, knowing Garnacho tracks back more than Marcus Rashford does. But let me know your thoughts in the comments um, on that. And I think the question now is where to from here? Where do we go from here? Ten Hag, He's always saying we need to trust the process. He said that again in his, in his press conference. We need to trust the process. We know what we're doing. We know what we're building towards. I still don't see it clearly. Maybe it will start to become... Like if today's the beginning of a five-game winning streak, let's say today's the beginning of a five-game winning streak, and we start seeing this one-touch sort of football, which we see 10 seconds of or 15 seconds of every now and then, Let's say we go on a five-game run. Does that solidify his future? It probably does. But I think the thing that we have to be extremely cautious about is that the stories from the media are not going to stop. We're going to keep hearing, this is the manager United wants. This is the, 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 the shortlist. This is who they're looking at. So I think as fans, we, those who are Ten Hag in, like myself, we need to keep supporting him, keep supporting the club. Like I said, a win is a win. I'm so, so glad for it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoy the content, remember to hit that subscribe button, smash a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Glory, glory, Man United.